Hey guys, Zach King here with a motion tutorial. This is a pretty cool one in Motion 3. And uh, yeah, if you have Motion 2, um, you can still do it. You're just not going to be able to do the camera effect. So here's the effect that you're going to end up with after this tutorial. Okay, so it looks like there's a glass floor. It's basically the same thing that I sh uh, did in a tutorial for Final Cut Pro, but this is for motion. I like doing it in motion because you have more control. You can move cameras. Uh, so let's dive in here. It's not too hard. Once you get the hang of it, it's not a problem. So I'm going to go to my file browser and look. Here's a photo I'm going to use. Scale it down. Uh, if you don't know your way around motion, watch my other tutorials first. Uh, it'll be a little easier, but if not, you can, I think you can still get by. Okay, so I got a photo here. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller there so if I can get the reflection in here. Maybe that size is good. Um, I'm working in an HD widescreen format here. Under Project Properties, you can change that right-clicking. Anyways, um, I'm going to pull up my uh, Project Pane by going uh, Apple 4, uh, Shift-Z in my canvas to see the entire thing. I'm going to click my um, template, or my photo, and hit K, which is a clone layer. Um, I'm going to line it up over here, over my other photo and then grab this um, dot here and what I'm gonna do is pull it down so it's looks like a reflection already and if you need to line it up hit shift and move it around and it'll line up for you so I left a little space between there and that's my clone layer the reason I don't want to copy and paste because whatever I do to the top layer in a clone layer it'll be a uh, it'll be updated in the other layer so whatever I do to this top original uh, photo it's gonna update so that's the reason you do a clone layer what I'm gonna do in the reflection which is upside down now is I'm gonna come up here to this rectangle tool you can hit R and make sure you have a rectangle selected and I'm just gonna cover the entire bottom area it doesn't matter if you go over the sides I'm gonna hit fill here I'm gonna grab the rectangle Make sure fill is selected. Um, here we go. Okay, in your inspector, come up. And over here, you're going to hit color and check gradient. Um, you have this little box here. Select it, go down to grayscale. And as you can see, I do that. It changes my rectangle to a grayscale. So now what you're going to do is leave that. And over here in your layers, select your clone clone layer. And you know, you can name that to reflection if you want or whatever, but it's a clone layer. And go up to object, add image mask, which is right down here. Hit it. And in, in my layers tab, you can see this image mask comes up. And uh, over here, it's asking for a mask source, which basically you're going to drag the triangle. You can actually drag it into this little box over here or you can drag it on top of the image mask either way it'll do the same thing now what you're gonna wanna do is under the image mask and this is the, a crucial step here um, I forget doing this a lot over here in your source channel under alpha you wanna hit luminance so what that's gonna do is make your um, gradient rectangle actually those attributes are gonna be applied to the clone so come up to your rectangle Make sure that's selected in your layers. Right click in your canvas and hit edit gradient. And this little slider pops up and you can actually move this around and we're editing the gradient. It's pretty handy. You can uh, adjust these bars according to what you want. So I think this is a good... I like lifting the top one, moving this up a little bit. I also lower the opacity. That sells the effect a little bit better. So there. You see we have a, a nice reflection on the clone layer. And if I, uh, I have this right, that's looking good. Now for the camera part. What I'm going to do is hit new camera. It's going to ask if I want to switch to 2D or 3D. Go ahead and switch to 3D. Now if you see I just move this rotation tool. This guy right here. I can uh, move it around and it simply goes around the 
the photo and the reflection stays attached and that's why I like doing it in motion better I have a lot more control so go ahead make sure your playheads in the beginning of the timeline hit record and uh, I'm gonna scrub through and just say halfway I'm gonna have it spin this way again if you are having trouble with the camera go watch a, a motion camera tutorial I have to see how these tools work now if you see I scrub through and I can take it to the end too and make the camera turn around or come lower do some weird funky angle I'm gonna but for this effect you know it makes it look like you have a glass floor if you keep it parallel so I don't know you can do a weird angle but it doesn't really make sense and if you can't see this 3d grid um, that helps me uh, for my camera camera motions hit view up here and come down to 3d grid and that turns that on and off and there's also a shortcut key command you can you can learn for that so there you have it I'm scrubbing through and we have a nice reflection if you want to export that file export pick your settings motion reflection and export and it'll turn into a dot movie file for you so that is a simple way in motion to have a reflection that looks really good I can go in here and continue to adjust if you want to adjust the gradient remember hit rectangle right click edit gradient and there you go I can uh, probably lower that a little bit and it looks like a pretty solid reflection so have fun with this trick I'll see you guys later subscribe if you like the videos see you guys